Lamont Paris has received a new contract from South Carolina, signaling a new commitment to basketball from the Gamecocks. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and you can find my written work, as always, over on Gamecock Digest on Fan Nation. Thank you all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Well, I already know that South Carolina's fan base had men's basketball fever on this Thursday afternoon because South Carolina is going to be playing in the second round of the SEC men's basketball tournament against Arkansas later this afternoon. I'll give you all my thoughts on that later in the show. But before we get into that, we got to talk about the biggest piece of news from today, no matter what happens, honestly, throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening, as Lamont Paris is set to receive a new contract from the University of South Carolina. Now, the contract is still pending approval from the board of trustees, but per ESPN's Pete Thamel, the new contract is going to see Lamont Paris stay at South Carolina through the 2029 through 30 season, and he will earn compensation upwards of at least $4 million annually. So, First and foremost, obviously, I mean, this should come as to no surprise to anybody. Lamont Paris, he's the SEC coach of the year for a reason. There's a reason why he is heavily in the running to be the national coach of the year because the turnaround that South Carolina's men's basketball program has undergone under Lamont Paris's watch in such a short time has been remarkable, winning just 11 games in year one and now having already won 25 games in year two and the SEC tournament has not even officially started yet for the Gamecocks. And South Carolina fans would probably admit that they did not see this kind of turnaround coming in year two. And I'll admit myself, heading into the season, I was sort of sitting there thinking, okay, this team is good enough to where they could be a little bit over 500. I think that they could have a winning season this year. I certainly did not see 20 plus wins coming. So, for, you got to give Lamont Paris a ton of credit for that. His coaching moves that he's made in game, the kind of guys that he brought in, and the culture that he has cultivated here has just been nothing short of remarkable. So Lamont Paris, in my opinion, deserves every doggone penny that he is going to get from this new contract. But the bigger story here is not just Lamont Paris earning this contract. It's more so what this is signaling to the rest of the SEC and the rest of college basketball. Because for the University of South Carolina, for the longest time, they have not had really any sport to hang their hat on. Now, obviously, that has changed in the past 10, 15 years. It started off with baseball back in 2010 with Ray Tanner. They'd had plenty of successful seasons up until that point, but they had never been able to break through and win the big one. And that all changed in 2010. Then they won back-to-back -back national titles in 2011 and dang near won a third national title in a row in 2012. Now it's Don Stanley women's basketball program that sort of leads the charge for South Carolina athletics as they have won two national championships. They've been to, I believe, five final fours in the last six, seven, eight years. And right now are competing for potentially their third national title. They're currently undefeated. And I would say that they are the standard of that sport right now. But Men's basketball and football, obviously, those are sort of the two main sports that most people talk about. So that's not meant to demean, obviously, everything that Ray Tanner did for baseball and obviously everything Don Staley has done for women's basketball. I'm going to talk a little bit more about her contract situation, what this could all mean in that regard later on. But 
Lamont Paris getting this new contract is a signal to the rest of the country from South Carolina that we are serious about basketball here. We do not care what it's going to take monetarily. We are going to give our coach the resources needed to build a winner. I'm sure that Lamont Paris, maybe he had gotten a couple of other promises in this negotiation. Um, you know, obviously, maybe facilities could use a little bit of upgrading. Maybe they would like a little bit more funding in the budget to go towards men's basketball. And so for the Gamecocks, look, they have done so well, both in men's and women's basketball this season, that they have been brought up alongside UConn in the conversations of the best basketball schools in the country this year. And again, when people talk about South Carolina, they don't talk about South Carolina for basketball, at least holistically speaking. They talk about them for, obviously, women's basketball and football. But if South Carolina can take advantage of the momentum that they have right now and they can make it where men's basketball is helping to lead the forefront and bringing in a lot more dollars to the school, that obviously has a trickle-down effect, in my opinion. That would help every other athletic program out to a certain extent. So this is, I think, a win for Ray Tanner. Again, when we talked about this at the beginning, I mentioned this a while back, I felt like personally Ray Tanner was going to make sure that this was going to get done on his watch because Ray Tanner, for all the criticisms that fans have had over the years, the one thing that fans right now have to, especially his biggest detractors, have to swallow their crow about is this hire that he has made of Lamont Paris. When the hire was made initially, there was a lot of blowback. There were a lot of question marks, and I merely was someone that had some question marks, but Lamont Paris has done nothing but pretty much prove everybody wrong since then. And if you have to point to the best hire in Ray Tanner's tenure to this point, you have to point to Lamont Paris. That's his biggest win. That's where he can stake his athletic director career on. And so the idea that Ray Tanner was going to risk him possibly leaving and going somewhere else, I just did not feel like that he was going to let that happen as long as he had something that he could do about it and obviously proves that with this contract negotiation. Some fans still might sit there and say that Lamont Paris is getting a bit too much for one really good season. My argument would be it's been a historic season. They've accomplished things that have never been accomplished here at South Carolina. And even when you look at the rest of the conference, depending on what Florida's Todd Golden is now getting, because I guess it's SEC men's basketball coach payday today because he also got a new contract that will give him at least $4 million annually. We don't know the exact figures yet, but despite all of that, Lamont Paris is going to be around eighth, tied for eighth in the SEC in terms of annual compensation when all is said and done, which still puts him pretty much middle of the pack in the SEC. So compared to the marketplace, this is a good contract. And by the way, he's going to be top 20 nationally in annual compensation, at least 17th or 18th, based on the figures that I saw, by the way, over at USA Today Sports, if you want to go and read into that a little bit further. So 100% well-deserved for Lamont Paris, and a really good thing for them to get this done before the beginning of postseason play, because now Lamont Paris does not have to worry about questions from the media about a potential contract, which I'm sure Lamont Paris will love that. Last thing he wants is a big distraction hanging over his head. And his players, guys that could come back like a Jacoby Wright, sitting there wondering, is my coach going to be back next year? Now they don't have to worry about that. They're going to be able to play more free. And quite frankly, they're going to be a bit more fired up now because they're going to want to go out there and prove that their coach served this contract and that he is the man for this program for the long haul moving forward. Now, as I alluded to earlier, Don Staley also has had a ton of success here at South Carolina and not trying to start any controversial conversation or anything like that. Simply speaking, dollar figures. I think Don Staley now is going to be due for a little bump in her contract as well. And I'll explain that a little bit more in just a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks.
Today's show and this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. And obviously, we're going to pick the South Carolina Gamecocks, basically comparing them to the Nissan Rogue. The team has absolutely surprised all of us with their powerful performances this season, breaking the program record for regular season wins this past Saturday against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. They say win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Gamecocks have done all year long. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Welcome back to this Thursday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. And as always, a big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who make the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecock sports coverage. Now, Lamont Paris has gotten a new contract that's going to pay him at least $4 million annually, which now means who is next in line at South Carolina. And quite frankly, right now, there's only one coach that has an argument to make that she deserves a bit more money. And that coach is Don Staley. Now, Don Staley is currently in the midst of a seven-year deal that started out at $2.9 million and escalates $100,000 annually. So this season, for example, she is making $3.1 million. And currently she is the third highest paid coach in women's college basketball behind LSU's Kim Mulkey and UConn's Gino Ariema. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Who is the best coach in women's college basketball right now? There's really no question and no debating about it. It is Dawn Staley. She has surpassed Gina R.E.M. at UConn, and right now I would say holds the upper hand on Kim Mulkey. Maybe not in terms of career resume, but in terms of where her program currently stands compared to LSU's, there's not a massive gap, but there is a gap. And Dawn Staley is the one looking down on Kim Mulkey in that regard. Now, Kim Mulkey is making $3.264 million this year. Again, all these figures according to USA Today Sports Database. And her contract also escalates $100,000 annually each year. So Kim Mulkey's contract will end with her making $4 million in the final year of that deal. I'm not going to do the quick math on Don Staley's, but Seven years, starting at two point nine, escalating a hundred thousand. She'll be at around three point six, so she'll be a few hundred thousand dollars behind Kim Mulkey once that contract's all said and done. So, this is quite simple, in my opinion. All you got to do, if you're Ray Tanner and this athletic department, the board of trustees, is basically say, okay, let's bump Don up a couple hundred thousand dollars, and let's make her the highest paid coach in women's college basketball. I'm not going to sit here and say, you've got to give her a contract now that matches what Lamont Paris is making. Not going to say that, and I'm not going to go there. But Don Staley absolutely deserves to be the highest paid coach. So it wouldn't take very long. Talk with her agent. I'm sure that her agent might even be giving them a phone call or an email or some kind of communication uh, in the very near future. Because obviously, you know that Don is super happy for Lamont Paris. And you know that the agent probably is happy for Lamont Paris to a certain extent as well. But also, at the end of the day, business is business. And so Dawn Staley, she absolutely can use this as part of her negotiation in the sense that now Lamont Paris is making at least $4 million annually. And again, who knows if there's going to be an escalator in his contract. So you got to give Dawn Staley a little bit of a bump so that way she is the highest paid coach. Heck, you can maybe just bump her up to $3.5 million annually and keep that $100,000 escalator in there as well, depending on what you've done with Lamont Paris's contract. We'll probably find out more details about Lamont's contract once the board of trustees approves it tomorrow morning or afternoon. But nonetheless, Don Staley's due for a bump in her contract. And quite frankly, she should make more money than Kim Mulkey. She has, she's had a bigger impact on this program than Kim Mulkey has at LSU. And in my opinion, is a bigger name or at least equal to Kim Mulkey in terms of how much media attention that she gets and brings to the school and herself, obviously, as well. So expect that to happen probably in the very near future is my overall point there. 
Now, getting back to men's basketball, the Gamecocks will be taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks later this afternoon up in Nashville, Tennessee. And I think that South Carolina has good reason to feel confident going into that game. And I'll let y'all know why in a few moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy and also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. All right, well, quickly, let's talk about South Carolina's matchup that will take place later today against the Arkansas Razorbacks. It's a 5v12 matchup in terms of seeding, which if this was the NCAA tournament, simply because of history, maybe Gamecock fans would be a bit more nervous. Maybe Gamecock fans are still a bit nervous because it is now a winner-go-home setting for South Carolina, the first time with this specific team that they'll be going through that. And Arkansas does have a slight advantage in the sense that they did play last night, so their legs will be a little bit warm, I guess you could say, going into today's game. But I still think that the Gamecocks have reason to feel optimistic. And it doesn't really have anything to do with the fact that South Carolina beat Arkansas by double digits in Bud Walton Arena just a couple months ago. The reason why I think South Carolina should feel confident is simply because of the way that both of these teams play. For South Carolina, we all know at this point, this is an offense that likes to swing the basketball around. They're going to try to do everything they can to get a great shot instead of a good one. And if sometimes that means the shot clock runs all the way down to five, four, maybe even three or two seconds, they are willing to do that. Arkansas, on the other hand, does not exactly play that way. Now, I don't know basketball X's and O's all that well, so I'm not going to try to act like I do. But what I saw last night against Vanderbilt was this. Arkansas is a team that likes to play isolation type basketball. And admittedly, Eric Musselman, he comes from the NBA or has an NBA background. He was a coach during the, you know, late 2000s, early 20 teens. And during that time, isolation basketball, one-on-one -on -one basketball was a pretty big deal. Obviously, that's not quite the case anymore in terms of how that game is played. But that is sort of what his Arkansas team is like. And his Arkansas team does have a bunch of really good shooters. You got a Devo Davis. Obviously, you got a, I believe, a Khalif Battle as well. So they've got some good players in their backcourt and their front court. And if there's one thing I would look out for if I'm a South Carolina fan, I would expect the Arkansas Razorbacks to try and attack the paint in a big way in today's matchup. Arkansas can shoot the three ball. 
at a decent clip, but they don't have a bunch of efficient shooters from what I can tell. And it seems like that a big reason why they had some success late in the season was because they just changed their mindset in terms of how they were going to try to get their points. They're being a lot more aggressive, driving to the rack, drawing a lot more fouls. Khalif Battle specifically has gotten a lot of foul calls drawn over the past few weeks. Makai Mitchell, number 15 for the Razorbacks, he'll be a guy to watch in this game. But obviously, unlike last time, Colin Murray Boyles, he also is a bit more refined in his game. He's gotten his feet wet. He's gotten a lot more experience since then. So Arkansas fans should expect Colin Murray Boyles to play better as well. But the point here is this. I think Arkansas is going to try to make this a game where they get to the free throw line a ton. They have been successful in that regard. The thing is, though, Lamont Paris and the Gamecocks have done a great job this year making sure that they don't make a bunch of bad mistakes in terms of positioning on defense, which usually is what ends up leading to a lot of fouls. This team is fundamentally sound in terms of staying in front of their individual matchup. And so... I don't expect that to change a whole lot in today's game, especially considering the fact that South Carolina has a lot more rest and is probably a lot more ready for this game in terms of their endurance and everything compared to Arkansas. I think if Arkansas cannot get out in front of the Gamecocks in the first half, then that's going to really hurt them in the second half. I think that in the second half, that's where you'll start to see that second game in 24 hours have a really big effect on the Razorbacks, especially if they are down. If that's the case, I think South Carolina is going to win this game. I'm not going to say easily, but I think that they'll pull away at the end and it will show in the box score. But if the Gamecocks find themselves where, you know, they're having to kind of run up and down the floor, which is more so the kind of game that Arkansas would like to play, then things could be a bit more interesting in this matchup. But nonetheless, I still like South Carolina's chances to win this game and move on to the quarterfinals on Friday where they would play Auburn if they do indeed come out on top in this game. But with that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show. As always, what are your thoughts on Lamont Paris' new contract and what it means as far as the commitment to basketball from the University of South Carolina? Do you think that this also means that Dawn Staley could get maybe a bump in her contract and compensation very soon? And lastly, what are your thoughts going into today's second round matchup between the Gamecocks and the Razorbacks in the SEC Men's Basketball Tournament? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or you could shoot me a direct message on X at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. But as always, thank you all so much for having me. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll be sure to catch you all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.